I'm getting started on part two of my fiberglass van flare project. And if you haven't seen part one, make sure to check that out. And that's basically me just assembling these molds. I know a lot of people when they're doing fiberglass, they create the mold and then they wax it and then they fiberglass over that because they're not actually keeping the mold as part of it. But because this is just insulation, it's going to serve that purpose as insulation in the van. So I'm not separating that from the fiberglass once I fiberglassed over it. And because of that, so I'm, I'm not waxing it and I am gonna put down a layer of resin before I do any fiberglass directly onto the foam. Because from what I found is a, a common mistake can be that people don't put down that resin underneath the fiberglass first and just putting it on top of the fiberglass doesn't always secure it as well as it should be secured. I'm gonna get this all cleared off and get the fiberglass opened up and get some of that pre-cut. That way, when I'm ready to put it down, I don't have to cut one piece at a time. I just have it ready to go. I think that'll make it a lot easier. Just having it, you know, already cut to size. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me all right with the mask on. I know it's not uh, ideal for video making. Probably do this in smaller pieces. So width wise instead of length wise, that'll end up working out a lot better. That is not the best tool for this. And I don't know how far this will spread, but we'll see how far it goes. The instructions say to mix this for about two minutes. And I could probably do more, because this is a pretty small amount. And I feel like it's gonna spread pretty easy. I'll be able to put it down pretty quick. So I'll do this first batch first, see how it turns out and then uh, can double it up from there. I'm not familiar with this resin at all, so I don't know how long it'll take to harden or how easy it'll be to spread. I have the roller brush, but I know that's gonna soak up quite a bit. So I'm just gonna use the regular brush for now. I don't really know how thin to spread that, but I feel like that's pretty good. All right, I did a little bit more this time, so let's see how far it goes. I'm gonna do a little bit over the edges as well. I guess not over the edges, but close to the edge so I can just kind of push it over myself. And I have this clamped to the table because I wanted to make sure that it hardened flat. But once I have that first layer on there, I'll just take off the clamps and it'll kind of be easier to move it around. I've got what I think is a pretty good base coat on there. Pretty saturated, I'd say. Initially, I was thinking I would let that first coat dry and then do another coat and then the fiberglass on top of it. But I'm just gonna put the fiberglass down because I don't, I don't see how that could hurt it. Um, and it's gotta be pretty tacky right now. So hopefully I can get it down in a good spot without having to uh, kind of cut it up or shift it. Because I know once it lays down, it's not moving. So, let's see how this goes. That should be good right there. So I'm gonna pour some resin on top of it. Yeah, I already have tons of it stuck to my gloves. Um, I'll pour some resin on top of it and then use my roller, wherever it is, to uh, get all the air bubbles out and make sure it's like saturating that fiber and it should look different as soon as it starts soaking up the resin. I'm gonna cut the corners on these really quick because as I put that down, it's gonna kind of fold over itself. And it's not going too far over this corner, but I'll still cut a little piece there. And I notice it's a lot easier to uh, 
just do like small little sections spread out rather than pouring it in one spot and having to spread it. So I'm going to try and do that. I definitely spread it out too thin right after saying I uh, figured out a technique, but I'll get more on there. I also didn't show this at the beginning, but I have uh, like a bucket of mineral spirits and that's what I'm going to leave all my tools in to just soak. That way uh, it just breaks down the resin and it won't harden on any of the tools. Let's get some more mixed up and uh, get a heavier coat on that until all those fibers are soaked up. I'll also trim that piece off the edge uh, because that goes over quite a bit. So it'll be easier to cut it now rather than later. This is actually my last bit of resin. So hopefully I can get this kind of down without it uh, kind of hardening in spots I don't want it to. If that makes sense. Like I don't want the fiberglass to be sticking up and then harden. I'll be able to get some more ordered right away, but I don't know when I'll have it here. I've never done this before, so I didn't really know like how much resin I was buying or how far it would go. But uh, I'll definitely need a couple more of those, uh, those bottles. And I'll also see if I can just get a bigger size too, because I'll definitely go through it, uh, especially with having two of these. Yeah, that's actually going down really nice. I got this on Amazon, but I might actually just go over to uh, like Walmart or Home Depot might still be open and see if I can uh, get some there. I ended up going to Home Depot and they don't have any of the Total Boat stuff that I was using, but I picked up some Bondo fiberglass resin and uh, I've actually used this before on some other smaller projects. And I think the downside of doing it with something like this is that it dries a lot quicker than the Total Boat stuff. Um, but I think it should still work. This one definitely smells way worse. The other one was like almost odorless. And this one is definitely not. That first layer actually has hardened pretty good or the, uh, the initial resin that I put on there because it definitely feels harder than just pushing on the foam. There's a lot of small little pieces like on this edge but those would be a lot easier to trim than something that's like in the middle sticking up. So I'm not too worried about that. I feel pretty good about that coat. Uh, you can definitely see, I don't know how well in the camera actually, but I think you can see the color difference between the stuff I did in the middle and the stuff I did around the edge with that Bondo. Um, so this, the middle section should be coated pretty good. Uh, you just notice the Bondo more just because of the color. I'm doing about 10 ounces of this at a time. I could probably do more since I'm like pouring it pretty generously, but I don't want to do too much and then not be able to manage it and then have it, you know, harden before I can get it down. Not necessarily like harden, but like to the point where it's not workable. It's been two and a half days since the last video clip. So a quick update. I am doing some troubleshooting. So here's how the fiberglass is looking. And the day after the last clip, so like a day and a half ago, I came out here and it was still the fiberglass, the resin was like still tacky. It wasn't uh, hardened. Um, so it is now because I, after doing some Googling, I ended up just putting it in the driveway in the sun 
and I think I put too much resin down and so it was like too thick underneath and it wasn't, it just like wasn't drying very fast. So it's hardened now, but I also have, um, I don't know how well you can see this in the camera, but this like isn't smooth with the, the rest of the surface because it either, there was either some chemical reaction or the foam just like soaked up the excess resin and kind of, uh, I don't know what the right word is for it, but I don't know, just like disintegrated basically. So I was trying to figure out like, okay, how am I gonna fix that? Because just doing more fiberglass over it would kind of be tricky. And I ended up picking up some of this Bondo body filler. It's like a, a putty that hardens. So you use it on like cars and I don't know, different projects. So I was gonna put some of that down before doing the next fiberglass layer. But then I was like, well, the next fiberglass layer could be uneven as well. So I'm just gonna do the rest of the fiberglass and then I'll go around like everywhere that, like, see this corner, like that looks pretty crappy. Um, I didn't even get the fiberglass all the way down there yet. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna get another layer on there. And then once I've done all the fiberglass, then I'll go back and do the body filler. I also picked up some scissors because the knife that I was using to uh, cut up the fiberglass wasn't that great. Um, so getting like a cleaner edge as I do the, the sides will be a lot nicer. So right now, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get a strip uh, down in all the corners. So onto the wood and like joining the foam to the wood. And then once I do that all the way around, then I'll do some more fiberglass sheets on top. And uh, hopefully it dries a little bit quicker this time so that I can actually get to the body filler later today because it shouldn't take that long for this fiberglass to get set. Uh, but I can also like put it outside since I'm working during the day to day and not in the evening. And I'll probably need at least four of these strips. I'll cut out five just to be safe. gonna kind of try and mold these into place. That way I can just fiberglass them all at once and just go right around the edge. Or I say fiberglass all at once, I mean resin. But you know, same thing. The thing with like not being really familiar with fiberglass is uh, sometimes I might think it's like not going that great and it is and other times I'll think it is going great and it's probably not. I'm pretty sure I've said this. I don't know what I'm doing, but I definitely should have been using a brush like this before. It is working super nice. I got all those edges down. It's looking pretty good. And then I also just, uh, I had some extra resin, so I just put a little bit on top. So hopefully um, that doesn't take too long to dry and I can just move on to the sheets on top and I've noticed a, a couple of things that I want to make a note of. Having the garage door open helps a ton with uh, just airflow, which I, I think is like, like, yeah, duh, obviously, you know, but it's not something that I had thought of when I was working in the evening time and had the garage door closed, even with like the back door cracked open a little bit, um, having the whole door open makes a big difference. And I think it also helps this dry a lot faster. Again, should be like an obvious no-brainer thing, uh, but I just wanted to say that because I, you know, have noticed that.
and it's very apparent at this point. Another thing I wanted to point out was um, originally for like my tools and brushes and things, I was using uh, the mineral spirits because I read online that that was the best thing to like leave the tools in, but it like wasn't working that great. So I did some more Googling and acetone, which I just picked up today, works way better. Like cleans the resin right off. Like this brush is like, um, it, it was getting kind of crunchy with the mineral spirits and in the acetone, you like can't even tell. It comes out so clean. And then I just use like some blue shop towels to uh, dry it up. So let's, uh, yeah, give this a, a little bit more time to dry and then get some more sheets on top of it. And I'm thinking, because the fiberglass is pretty thick, I'm thinking two layers should be good. Uh, in some spots, it's more like three layers because of the overlap, but I think that should be uh, pretty solid. And then I'll be doing the, um, the gel coat on top of that. And then also like the other, like the Bondo putty. So I say one more layer, of fiberglass but it's really like three more coats of like a hardened resin and uh it should be pretty solid it's been about uh i don't know over half an hour and that is dry to the touch sounds good so let's uh get some full sheets on there And I know you can't see this where the camera's at, but I'm just trimming the excess, uh, kind of where the wood is or where the wood ends. And I want to make sure to cut these corners so that they go down smooth. I got that other half down and I might've been a little ambitious at the end. I started mixing a little more than I should. So there's like some bumps and things in there, but uh, I'll do a little bit of sanding before I do the gel coat after I do the body filler. I've never used a body filler like this before, but looking at the flare, I'm thinking I wanna mark the spots where I'm gonna be putting the body filler because it's kind of hard like with the lighting just to be able to see it. So I'm using, a, I grabbed these like paint mixing sticks from Home Depot, um, which I've been using like for the resin and they're just, you know, convenient to have on hand. And I'm gonna take a Sharpie and actually just run this across the top and find the spots that it dips in and just kind of mark them. Uh, so it's a little bit easier to find where I need to put the body filler. It's uh, not very pretty, but that'll just help me see kind of where I need to uh, put that putty down. And I have a can opener, one of those little pull tops. That'll work, I think. So from what I've seen, you do like a half inch of this or a half inch thick. And then however big your diameter is, you run like a bead of the hardener through it. And I've also read that you don't want to like stir this. You want to fold it that way it keeps the uh, air bubbles out. I think that's pretty good. The color from the hardener is, I think mixed in pretty well.
I think I can definitely manage doing a bigger batch than I just did. It's looking pretty good. I don't want to put down too much right away because uh, I, I do want to make sure that like dries completely. This would definitely be easier with uh, an actual sander, but I don't have a sander, so I'm just doing it by hand. And uh, this is some 80 grit sandpaper. So uh, it's like, I mean, it's not tearing it up like crazy, but it is doing a pretty good job at like removing all the high points. So I'm just going through here and anything that's sticking up, I'm just smoothing it down. There's no way I'm doing this all by hand, so I'm gonna go get a sander. Honestly, I should have bought one of these a long time ago because there's so many things I could have used it for and I've always just like done it by hand, you know, elbow grease. Uh, I also got some masks because uh, the fabric one I've been wearing, I need to wash. But anyways, should be able to uh, crank through this pretty quick, get it nice and smooth. Way better. I went to town a little bit on sanding this. Spent like the last, I don't know, probably half hour, maybe 40 minutes getting that all smoothed out. And uh, I mean, it's not perfectly smooth, but it's pretty good. I think, uh, I don't know how much of a coating, let's see, what am I looking for? This gel coat is supposed to be like the, the top coat. Um, and it's got a hardener in it. I don't know how thick it is. So I'm gonna do one more coating of just resin and then let that harden and then uh, do the top coat on top of that. I also still need to trim off all this stuff on the edges. And uh, I think I'll have to use my, um, my grinder, my metal cutoff to just go around that real quick. Uh, Cause it's way too hard to cut it with a knife, but the cutoff should Cut it off, no problem. I have a pretty big batch that I'm mixing up because uh, I want to do this all in one shot and just kind of spread it around really quick. And then I'm going to use my heat gun to uh, make sure there's no air bubbles in it. It also helped to kind of spread it out and get it laid even. My main goal here is to just uh, cover up like all the little holes and things without putting more fiberglass down to just get a really smooth surface. That's looking really nice. As always, I don't know how well you can tell on the camera. Um, it's not perfectly flat, but it is uh, looking pretty good. I don't have a great spot to set this camera right now, but hopefully I'll be able to just hold it. That works pretty good. I'm gonna finish uh, getting that cleaned up. I do have this clamped to the table. That way it won't move. So uh, I've got that edge hanging over. It's not actually like right on the end of the table. So off it a little bit. But yeah, I'll finish getting that cut out and then uh, I will have to get it wiped down. That is satisfying, but also there's a lot of stuff on there. I still need to cut those uh, the support pieces off the curved ends. So I'm gonna do that before doing the top coat. Or I keep blanking on what that's called. So whatever that is. 
I don't know how well this will work, but I think I'll just uh, try cutting it off in sections until I can find those screws. I don't know, I'll go from there. Oh, there's one. I'll uh, get the wood off and then take the, uh, the grinder to it. It worked out great. So I'll uh, get the other side chopped off. Oh, and I don't think I've mentioned this, but uh, something else I'm gonna do is um, resin the inside of this, just to harden it up a little bit so that when I put the fabric on it, on the inside of the van, um, it's not, you're not gonna be like denting the foam. But anyways, just a side note. This stuff has a pretty hardcore warning label on it, so. I've got a mask back on, and uh, I'm in very open air, of course, so. And this hardener is 15 drops for every one ounce. I'll probably be do, uh, I don't know, maybe 12 ounces. And 15 times 12 is uh, uh, 30, 180, I think. It's a lot more, uh, the liquid is a lot thinner than the resin. I'm not too worried about uh, dripping it off the edge. So that's gonna seal up all of uh, like the edge of the wood. That was a really good amount that I kind of just guessed at because of how far the resin was spreading. I almost did more, but I'm glad I didn't because that worked out really nicely. It's looking good. It's, uh, it's dry. It has a very interesting texture, but uh, I don't know, it's smooth. You can definitely see like all the imperfections and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna hit it with some filler primer. And I, I don't actually know if I need to put primer on this before I paint it, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I didn't record it, but I did get this flipped 100, 180 degrees around. Uh, just to get both sides, you know, really well covered. And uh, I'm just gonna let that dry for, I don't know, probably 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll be good to paint it with the black gloss. I'll get probably one or two more coats on this tomorrow um, because it's dark out and I don't have great light in the garage. I can't really see like the spots that aren't covered as well. So tomorrow I'll uh, get that done and then get the underside resined and then get a final look at it. And like I said, in some good lighting, some daylight. The last coat of paint I did on there isn't completely done drying. So I don't wanna flip over the flare to uh, do like the resin underneath, but I do wanna get this video wrapped up. So here's the final look of how it looks from the outside. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I know there are you know, plenty of imperfections on there. And uh, I mean, you can see all kinds of texture in there. It's not completely smooth. But uh, overall, for having never done anything like that before, um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. So I still need to get the second one built and uh, I'll probably change up my techniques a little bit there. 
now that I know just kind of how this one came out and uh, now that I've worked with the fiberglass a little bit. So I'll get that one. Um, I don't know, it'll probably be a day or two until I can get that finished up. And then uh, after this video, we'll do the install video and I'll figure out how to pull the windows out of the van and get that chopped up. Cause I do have to uh, cut this piece out and get those windows taken out. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.